as far as your three, you have three rookies on the team. You got Christian Ayenga, I think you say how you say it. I think you guys drafted him in 09. Yes. And then you got Manny Harris. And then you got Samar Samardo Samuels. That's uh, right. Tell me about those three guys or, or what you know about them. Well, I ain't, uh, has not really seen any playing time in the NBA yet. In fact, I think he's in the B League right now. I'm sure he is, but um, he's a, he's an athletic freak. He's very raw, and uh, he he he's got himself a little jump shot. But again, we're not going to know how well that is when he goes into an actual NBA game. But um, we know if he if he gets opportunities to finish on the fast break, uh, he's going to be fun to watch. But right now, I, mean, I don't think he's really ready for the NBA yet. I think he should have stayed in Spain for the last two years on his contract. I think he would have had a uh, LeBron stay here. So I haven't seen much from him yet. Uh, Samardo Samuels and Manny Harris, they've gotten limited time, but I've been very pleased with what I've seen. Um, Harris, I think he had an injured ankle through uh, all the draft activities this year, so it's understandable why he wasn't drafted. He didn't get to perform. We, uh, we signed him as an undrafted free it. Well, I'm not sure if it's an undrafted free agent if they go and draft a draft. Well, actually, it is, isn't it? <laughs> um, he's very good at pushing the basketball, man. He's one of those guys who I think is going to play better in the NBA than he played in college. I mean, the, the Princeton offense Taylor made for him, too. Um, he's got himself a three-point shot. He's able to, if he has enough time to get it off, and uh, you know, as he plays more in the NBA, it's going to take him less time to get that shot off. But um, right now, he's able to knock down shots on a consistent basis. Um, he runs, he handles the ball very well. I think he can be a big part of this team going into the future. Samardo Samuels as well. I mean, I thought he would not fit into the Princeton all that good because uh, he is a back to the basket guy. He bangs around underneath, but he's made some adjustments uh, to his game. When he has gotten playing time, um, he still bangs around under there. He's not afraid to take a hit, and we need a big man like that. But um, he, he's not getting that much time. Not sure why. In fact, uh, he, he just has some games where he shows up in plain clothes like they decide before the game not to play him, and I'm not sure why. He, uh, he's got like a little 14-foot jump shot, finishes well around the basket, um, You know, not, not afraid to bruise around under there. I'm, I'm happy with uh, what I've seen so far, but again, I haven't seen much. But um, I'm excited to have all three of these guys. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what they do in the future. Now here, here's what I want to know. I, I want to talk about my boy Leon Pohl for a second. Uh, my heart goes out to him as far as his injury is concerned. How was he doing uh, on his comeback from his injury when he had when he was with the Boston Celtics? How's he doing with that now? Well, I'm sorry to say that he has lost some of his explosiveness and his speed as well. Um, he's still a very strong guy, but. I, I don't know if we can continue playing. I guess he's a uh, quote unquote third string center right now. And uh, I just don't think without, you know, his explosiveness, his, uh, his athletic ability made up for his short size, but um, it, it, he's lost that somewhat. And it, this was a knee injury. I mean, it's a pretty serious injury and he's injured this knee three times. He might just need some more time to recover. But then again, this might be as good as he can get again. And uh, it, this, it upsets me too. This guy is a, uh, he's a very good player in Boston. And uh, uh, unfortunately from what I've seen so far, I don't think he's going to be that player anymore. Um, we gave him a, a few minutes of time against the Orlando magic when we had Anderson bears out with Ryan Collins and foul trouble. And though he, he, he tried his best against Dwight Howard, but he was just not able to get up there enough to contest him all that much. And it, just when you have a couple, we are pretty deep power forward. And we got a couple of really reliable guys at center. It's just unfortunate that um, he may need some more time in actual NBA play to get strong again, but he's not probably not going to be able to get that time here. And uh, another thing too, he is whenever he played, whenever he had his big games in Boston, he was on national TV. He a guy, he's a guy who plays really good in the spotlight, and uh, you're really not going to see that much in Cleveland anymore. So uh, I'm not sure if. Uh, He'll never get back up to his former level, but from what I've seen so far, it looks like that's not going to happen. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of feel the same way. I was hoping you might say something different, but because you know the team so well, bro. I'd like to, man. I, I was really glad when he got here, and I was hoping he'd make a full recovery. But you know, you, this was a serious injury. He might need some more time. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, he he gets better. Now. What about Ramon Sessions? I, I really like that pickup. Tell me how his transition has been with the Cleveland Cavaliers with him and Mo Williams in that backcourt. I think it's gone pretty good for the most part. Um, we needed a better defender in the backcourt. 
And uh, he, he's come through a little bit with that. I think that um, he's a very good one-on-one -on -one defender. But, again, his, uh, you know, he, along with everybody else, his rotations are off. Um, he doesn't know this defensive system yet. And I thought he would become a, mainly a distributor here. But that hasn't been the case. He pushes the basketball. He gets into the lane whenever he can. Um, he's got a very good little jump shot off the dribble. Um, he doesn't take many long shots, and I'm glad to see that because he took a lot in Minnesota last year. But then again, he owes that to the triangle offense. I was pretty puzzled when they picked him up, but I thought he'd be the perfect player here. But um, And he is, but not the way I thought he'd be. He's he's uh, more of a scorer than I thought he was. He's not going out there trying to be the distributor. He's going out there um, using his speed. He's he's very good at finding holes under the basket. He reminds me a little bit of Stephon Marbury in that respect. And, uh, he can get to the basket at will. And uh, he's I think he needs to slow down a little bit. I mean, he tries to go too fast sometimes, and this is an easy basket. But for the most part, I'm very happy about how he's played here, just uh, being a scorer instead of a distributor, and it's weird to say that, but um, he's come through really well. He's coming off the, be coming off the bench with 10 points. Um, he's been a big part of this team staying above water this season. Yeah, I think he's an excellent pickup. Now, for you being the Cleveland Cavalier expert and being a realistic, being a realistic expert, what, what would be a successful season uh, for the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, this year uh, to finish the 2010-2011 season? Um, I would be fine with that. You know, this is realistic, too. Seventh or eighth seed in the playoffs, I truly think we can get there. It would really surprise me if we made it any higher. But um, I think that uh, winning, say, under 35 games would be a big disappointment to me. I think we can win more than that. And I, I really think we can make the playoffs with this roster. And, uh, you know, we're, we're at the number eight seed right now. I mean, we were as of yesterday. We're not even playing at full strength. We're not even using our system the whole game yet. Our defense is still pretty uh, it's pretty out of whack, and we're still a number eight seed here. So uh, I think that we're going to surprise a lot of people at the end of the season, and we'll make the playoffs. Okay. That's a fair assessment, and I, and I agree with that. Seventh or eighth is definitely realistic. And, yes. you know, when you lose a player of LeBron James caliber and then you bring in a new coach with a new system, with a lot of new players, uh, it's very difficult. But you guys are definitely doing a great job uh, considering the circumstances. Yes, I think so. Now, we got the team out the way. Now, I have the Cleveland Cavalier correspondent here, and I could not talk to you without talking about Mr. LeBron James. Mm -hmm. Now, what yeah. I want to do is I want to do a little timeline here, and I want to start with Game 5 against the Boston Celtics. Walk me walk me through from your perspective on how you felt about LeBron and how he carried himself and what happened in that fifth uh, game against the Boston Celtics at home with the series tied 2-2. Two to two. Well, you know, man, um, I really like to keep it real. And, you know, a lot of people might disagree. Some, uh, some may not. A lot of people don't disagree. But I don't really care. I'm going to tell you what I think. He threw the game. I've been watching this dude for seven years. And, you know, it, this guy, I've never seen any type of great go out and play the way he played. If we would have won this game, we would have had a couple more until we won the, we were able to take the Eastern Conference Finals. But he goes out there, and uh, you could tell his body language, everything about him. He did not care. His body language, the types of shot he took, um, his hustle throughout the entire game, in every aspect. I mean, he did not go for rebounds. He, he just, he, he was lazy with the ball. Uh, he didn't care. He just didn't care. That is what I saw. Um, after the game, too, I thought, you know what, um, I really do not expect us to win this series. A after I saw that, I was like, you know, I really didn't know what to think, but I, I thought for sure that we were not going to win this series. It was devastating. I've never seen us lose like that in the entire time the franchise has existed since I started supporting it. I mean, third by 32 points at home in the playoffs in a year where we had a very good chance to win the title. And this guy who um, everybody thought was going to save our team, take us to the big dance, was out there just, you know, basically not even worried that we were down 30 points the whole game and playing awful. And it was it was not, you know, the, the rest of the team was also affected by something. You know how they were. Whenever a big play was made, you saw all these celebrations from the bench and everything. You didn't see one single, you know, anything that game. I think that something was happening internally, and I know the whole team denies it, but something was up with that group that night. Because, um, you know, from the very first minutes of the game, Jamario Moon would have a sweet dunk, and nobody on the, on, nobody on the bench would raise a finger, man. It, 
it, you know, something really bothered LeBron in that game, bothered him enough to quit. And uh, the, the, the rest of the team obviously knew what it was. And uh, would you like me to continue with the rest of the series in the summer? Or? Yeah, talk, yeah. Talk about, uh, well, before we get that, let me, let, me, let me stop you at game five real quick. Because I'm going to ask you, I'm gonna, we're going to do a timeline all the way up till now. Game five, in your opinion, do you have any inside because you're in that area? Because there's some rumors out there about what happened before game five. Do you have any inside or inside scoop about uh, what caused the team and LeBron to play the way they did in game five? Well, there, everybody, um, everybody's wondering as much as I did. I've listened to a ton of radio shows, and uh, that's where you're going to get most of the information on that. And uh, there, there have been a great effort to find out what irked the team that night, and nobody has been able to find out for sure. All you've got is the uh, Delonte West rumors, and I don't, you know, I mean, I've discussed that plenty of times. You know, that's that's basically all anybody has. Nobody knows for sure what was going on, and I don't think anyone ever will unless somebody comes out and says something. It might it might come out in a book in a few years. Yes, it, that that's the only way I can picture something like this being revealed because there's been a lot of effort to try and find out, and still no one has a clue. Okay, now what was going on after Game Five in the city of Cleveland and on the radio and everything else? What was everybody saying, and what what was just the the pulse of the, of the of the fans? Basically, everybody was saying the same thing. Here we go again. I mean, people had basically given up hope. Um, even though we had, you know, possibly a couple more games to play, you know, if we would have won in Boston, then, uh, you know, we would have been uh, evened up again, and we, we could have taken it here home again. But um, that was a real grim mood, and everybody uh, felt the same way I did, that they had never seen LeBron like this, that, uh, you know, this team, which was uh, so close and jubilant together, had just all suddenly it looked like they were sour. They did not want to be out there. It, it was just, it was a real grim mood around the city, man. People, um, they were just, they were about ready to say, hey, you know, season's over, guys. And uh, turns out that's the way it was. We went to Boston and lost that game. Yeah. So let's let's talk about game six. Uh, 